so I couldn't do it. Um, I couldn't go through with the DNC or, or anything like that because my baby was still moving and was still alive. So I waited it out. We waited it out. That was 15 weeks and 6 days the day my water broke. We waited it out until the next event. Until the next event. So, from the day that I was discharged from the hospital and um, I was going every three days, I believe, to the doctor um, just for monitoring, monitoring, and they let me know if I make it to 22 weeks, then they will put me in the hospital where I would have to stay for the remainder of my pregnancy until um, they deliver the baby and the baby would have to be in the NICU for however many months. And I believe they told me they would, if I went for 22 weeks, they would try to keep me pregnant up until, if I made it to 22 weeks from 15.6, which is pretty much 16, um, from 22 weeks, they would try to keep me pregnant until I believe they said 32 weeks. 30 until I was 32 weeks and they would take the baby and the baby would be in the NICU probably for a number of amount, amount of months and they wouldn't be able to tell me what complications the baby would have but most likely the baby would have um, some complications but so I was to go to the doctor's office every three days up until 22 weeks and at this point I'm 16 weeks so everything was was the same every doctor's appointment it was the same but the baby's the heartbeat was still so strong and um, the baby would move um, a lot uh, when I would go so I'm like okay I'm hopeful I started re doing some research about um, other pre prom stories which is why I'm sharing mine um, I started and I, I knew some people before that had to spend a couple months in the hospital with the baby and the baby being in the NICU when they were fine. Of course, my personal story that I knew, they didn't experience pre-prom, um, but they experienced other complications that made them stay in the hospital uh, the whole uh, for a couple months within the pregnancy. Okay, so back to the fact that I was almost 16 weeks. Let's, let's fast forward. I'm going to all the doctor's appointments. Then one day, this specific day, I was 18 weeks. I had made it to 18 weeks in three days on this one specific day, and I started feeling some pain in my side. My sides, I'm like, is this those round ligament pains? Somebody told me about round ligament pains, and I was like, maybe this is this is kind of painful. Whatever. I went to sleep. I woke up. I kept feeling it. It was in more intense, more intense, but it wasn't too intense. So I was like, okay. Um, what about my day? I went to the doctor. I went to the doctor that day. Um, I did regular things that day, and then that night, it was getting more intense. It was getting stronger. And then I said to my husband, I said, "What if these are contractions? Because these are feeling really strong now." really think they may be contractions so I started doing the timing and based on what the time was based on what I thought I was like okay maybe they're not contractions I'm not really sure but the timing it was getting really hard and really painful and I like couldn't move and I was like oh my gosh I'm like are these contractions then at one point I said these are really painful maybe these are contractions and I went and I, I felt like I needed to use the bathroom so I went and I used the bathroom and it actually felt very it like uh, the pain went away so I was like oh that feels good like when I was using the bathroom the pain went away so I came back and I got in the bed and I was laying down and um, I started feeling the pain again and I was like oh my gosh this is really bad pain I was like maybe these are contractions 
you know what? I was like, babe, maybe these are contractions. And I had just uh, got out the shower. And I was just like, I don't know. I think these are contractions. And my husband's like, well, let me get in the shower. We'll see. I don't know. Sometimes you say it is. Sometimes you say it's not. So he got in the shower. And I was like, well, I'm just going to sit on the toilet while you're in the shower and talk to you. Because when I was sitting on the toilet when I was actually using the bathroom, I didn't feel bad at all, really. So... Maybe if I'm in that position, maybe the pain will just go away. So I went and I sat. I went to the bathroom first and sat on the toilet before he even got in the shower. But he was like taking his clothes off, getting ready to go in the shower. And I sat down. And then I felt like I had to use the bathroom again. And I sat on the toilet and I felt a big release. A big blob come out of me and I heard something hit the, the water and I said oh my gosh is that the baby because I, I knew it wasn't poop <laughs> I, I knew it wasn't um, but I was like I froze and I was like I was calling my husband I was calling my husband and babe babe I think that was the baby I think the baby just came out of me please check Please check to see. And he looked. And it it was the baby. It was it it was the baby. Um when he looked, he, he couldn't tell me. He just said a couple of curse words and just closed his eyes and walked back and forth. And I'm like, tell me, tell me, what is it? And he told me, he said, yes, it is. I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yes. Look, and I, I couldn't look. I could not look. I told him, I don't, I told him, I don't know what to do. Call my mom, call my mom. He called my mom on speakerphone and he told her and she it was just silent. She didn't even know what to say it. I said, hang up, call 911. I don't even know why I told you to call her. Hang up, call 911. So he called 911. Um, they talked him into getting the baby out of the toilet. He got the baby out of the toilet. They told him to get a towel. Now, this whole time, I'm not looking. And mind you, the baby is still connected to me. Um, so if I'm on the toilet right here, he's over here um, with the baby in his hands and at this point I'm refusing to look I'm looking this way and I couldn't I couldn't look and he asked me to look and I couldn't look and he's telling the 911 operator that the baby is moving so imagine the baby is moving the baby is not dead. The baby is moving his leg. The baby is moving his arms. It was a boy. The baby is moving. And um, 18 weeks, 3 days, the baby is moving. They proceed to call 911. 911 comes to the door. And they tell him, you need to go open the door for 911. And he says, babe, you have to hold the baby because I have to go open the door for number one. I said, I can't. He said, you have to. What do you want me to do? It's still connected to you. I can't. I have to go open the door. And I'm sorry, I'm on. A, I'm at an upstairs bathroom. <laughs> so he has to go downstairs to open the door for 911. Um, so I said, okay. I'm sitting on the toilet. I said, okay. Like this. He puts the baby in my hands. I, I put my hands here. I did not look. I'm like this. The whole time he's gone. And honestly, my face is stoic. Just like this. Straight face. There's no emotion. It was just very stoic. And I'm staring at the, the wall. And I have my baby in my hands. I'm refusing to look at it. <sighs> the 911 comes they take the baby from me I still haven't looked I'm just like this on the toilet facing the other way 
and they say something and by this point they've pushed my husband out into the hallway and all of them have crowded the bathroom and it's just me I don't know what happens in that moment it's kind of much a blur but I do know at some point while we're still in the bathroom and you're, they're cutting the umbilical cord and things like that I just start screaming I start crying and it is and and now looking back into the moment I was so stoic and it went from stoic blank to just uncontrollable crying and I can hear my husband yelling to me because they had pushed him to the hallway like babe it's okay you're it's all right it's fine and um, they proceed to tell him to give me clothes and um, they proceed to tell him to give me clothes. They walk me downstairs. They put me on a stretcher. They put me in the ambulance. Um, at this point, I'm asking where my husband is. They tell me they're not, they don't know. Um, it's COVID so they did not let him get in the um ambulance with me uh but i heard them say i think they i heard them say that he was gonna follow in his car so i was okay with that um i don't know where the baby is i i don't see the baby anymore i don't know where the baby is um so we make it to the hospital they put me in this room at the hospital i don't know fast forward this is what I'm giving you my recollection um, and me and my husband are in the room they're taking blood now the whole time from the drive I was still in pain having contractions to getting into the emergency room they're trying to pull the placenta they're like yanking on it trying to pull it out then they give me morphine when I'm in the emergency room to try to tell me to uh, to say that they will pass it and let me tell you from this point of the story to the end of the story this was a horrible experience at this hospital I was driven to a hospital that I never went to I was taken to a hospital that was not the hospital where my OBGYN um, was Located now, the hospital my OBGYN is located, and the hospital they took me to is the same distance away from my house, the same amount of minutes, but it's just in two opposite directions. And they chose to take me to this one, um, so they took me to this one. My OBGYN does not work out of the hospital, I've never been to the hospital in my life. And from this point of the story to the rest of the story, is a horrible, horrible hospital experience. It was the worst, it probably made the situation way worse than what it already was. So, they're trying to pull out the placenta. They're like, oh, we're going to have to have you deliver the placenta. And I'm just listening at this point. Um, I don't really, I mean, I've never been pregnant before. I don't really know what's going on. So, I'm just listening. Um, then they give me morphine. And I hear them in the hallway. Uh, doctors, um, not doctors, nurses, because it was just nurses and like a head nurse of the ER talking in the hallway outside of my room saying it could take her hours to push out the placenta. I'm not trying to be here all night. I heard them say that. Okay, so they're like, oh, well, yeah, like we're gonna give you the morphine to try to see if you can push it out. And then I guess my face is back stoic because one lady who is trying to set up an IV. They done poked me about eight times not being able to find the vein at this point. My husband is getting angry at them. Um, she asked me, did you even know you were pregnant? This one lady over here. And I just look at her. I say yes. And I go like this. I think my face was stoic that whole time. Um, but then the worst that I consider the worst thing. Now, I haven't seen the baby. Um, I haven't seen the baby at all. 
my husband was with me because he he followed me there. He was with me in the in the room while they were while we were in the emergency room. He hadn't seen the baby since he handed it over to the paramedics in my house in the bathroom. Um, they someone walks past the door and says. Does the mom want to see the baby? Because if she don't want to see the baby now, um, if she don't want to see the baby now, it, it, at this point, they got to go straight to pathology. They say she, the baby got to go straight to pathology, so if she don't want to see the baby now, she's not going to be able to see it. The mama want to see the baby? Now, they're talking like this to each other right in front of me. And, oh, I'll give you one better. While they're saying this, with the door open in front of me, let's pretend this is a clear bucket, right? A clear bucket with a clear cap on top of a bucket, plastic, plastic clear bucket. And this is like a tap, up top of the clear cylinder bucket. She's banging on it. The mama want to see the baby because uh, after this, the baby got to go straight to pathology. So, um... If the mama wants to see the baby, uh, she need to let us know now before we take it to pathology. And then, they're like, do you want to see the baby? And I'm looking like, why is she speaking like this? But of course, at this moment, I'm very stoic, so no words come out of my mouth. And I'm just looking by the way that I'm realizing, I'm realizing that my baby is in the bucket that they're pounding on while they're doing all these motions trying to say oh do the mama want to see the baby because the baby got to go to pathology so let me know if the mama want to see the baby but they're not talking to me they're talking to each other in front of me with these type of motions and in that moment I just no words will come and the lady next to me, who they were screaming at, talking to, was like, do you want to see the baby? Do you want to see the baby? And I looked at her, like, ah, ah. And I'm just looking at her, and she, I think she could see the dissatisfaction on my face, even though I couldn't see it. And she was like, can you wrap the baby up? They were like, oh, okay, yeah, we can wrap it up, we can wrap it up. And she was like, okay, yeah, go wrap it up. And so they went to wrap it up. And then they proceeded to tell me that, um... They're going to call the OBGYN on staff to help me deliver the placenta. They bring in the baby a couple minutes after that, and the baby is wrapped. Oh, oh, and by that point, when they were saying pathology, my husband, who did not attend and could not attend due to COVID, all of those appointments with me, and maybe I was not telling him everything that they told me but when they were asking him if we want to see the baby da, 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 my husband was like he he didn't he wasn't attending all the appointments so he didn't know that much of what was going to happen with the baby or what was going on and so when they were asking about if we want to see the baby now because we ain't going to be able to see it afterwards my husband said oh is the baby going to go to the NICU my you my, the last time my husband seen the baby, the baby was alive. Nobody communicated anything to us. We hadn't seen the baby since we've been there. The first time I seen the baby was when let home girl was in front of the emergency room door tapping on the bucket. And I don't think he realized that that baby was in the bucket because it did. It just from our view, it you couldn't really tell it was a baby inside there. It was like a cloudy clear but I could tell the baby was in the bucket and when he said the NICU all of their face froze and I think at that point they realized that no one had told us formally that the baby was no longer alive which I believe the baby died after the paramedics cut the umbilical cord at my house um, when they were detaching the baby from me because of course it wasn't um, it wasn't developed enough okay so 
that was I just added that in to show how insensitive that they were okay fast forward um, they bring the baby in after that fiasco and them realizing whatever they told him uh, that um, that isn't the case and the baby isn't alive so that's when my husband realized that we had also lost the baby even though in my brain I had already knew um, they bring in the baby wrapped properly thank you um, and he was very small he was very very tiny. He was very tiny. And I looked at him and his face was small. I thought he was very cute. His skin, I mean he was developed. He had skin. It was kind of translucent but it was still there. Um, he, he, you see all the fingers. His face was fully developed. Lips, nose, eyes. It looks like an actual face. Um, I went like this with a blanket and I seen his leg, his knee, his, 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 his feet and I closed the blanket because I, for whatever reason to me at that point it made it too real. Even though I was looking at his face and I opened it just seeing, I don't know why that extremity, that specific leg, knee, foot thing just did it for me but I was like oh my gosh it's too real. I closed the blanket and I handed it to my husband. My husband sat with the baby for a little bit. Um, until they came to take him, which was fine. Um, at that point, looking at the baby, I was still very stoic. Um, I was not emotional. Up until this point of the story, I was only emotional um, when I previously said uh, the paramedics was in the bathroom and then it just came out of nowhere. It happened and then it went away. And then from that point on until now, I'm still very stoic. So they take the baby, um, about 10 minutes after they take the baby, they're like, okay, the OBGYN is here, we're going to transfer you, uh, let's, let's take you to the room down there, we're going to see if he can deliver, if not, we're going to, I think they wanted to do a DNC there, I don't know what they were saying, but, you know, it was just a mess. So, they pushed me down to what looked to be some type of operating type room in the emergency unit. Um, they told my husband to sit out and wait during this process. They wheeled me back to the OBGYN. There were about two nurses in there with him, which was a man. Um, and they were propping me up and they were trying to tell me to push. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, push like this or push like that. I'm like, but what do you mean like this? And he said, haven't you had a baby before? In that same tone, in that same annoyedness, the OBGYN on staff, haven't you had a baby before push like that? I said, no, I've never had a baby before. And he froze, and the nurse next to him froze, and they had a look on their face, the same look of the fools who froze that was tapping the bucket, that, oh, shoot sorry maybe that was insensitive so even though they were horrible horrible staff there and I mean at least they may have some type of part because when I did say certain things uh, to them as well as the fools and the the nurses and the with the bucket they were in different points of the story they did all realize and freeze that okay maybe that wasn't the best word choice to you so, oh, okay, um, ouch, so, okay, I'm like, no, eventually they tell me how to push, and a, a good amount of pushes, maybe like four or five, I deliver the placenta, he looks at it, he's like, okay, it's intact, we don't have to do any more procedures, and they leave the room, he said, you're good, you'll be able to go home tonight. Um, let's do some paperwork for you. You'll be able to call home tonight. You look fine. And he left. The other two nurses that were there with him, they cleaned me up and everything. And they put on new sheets, whatever. They cleaned up everything. And they left me in that same operating room looking thing. And they left. 
so I was there by myself after they cleaned me up. And when the two nurses left, he left, and then they cleaned me up, and then they left. And when they left, the sound of the door of them leaving, and it clanked. I don't know what happened to that, too, but that is when all the emotions came out. They left, and I literally started screaming. Not just crying, but, like, crying and screaming. And I think all of it just, that just made it final, you know? It, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing that's what triggered it. I'm not sure what triggered it, but it was really, like, I was stoic and emotionless and then when the door just slammed it was just like and it was a flood and it was I was crying a lot it was it was a lot I was crying a lot um it was a lot of emotion a lot of tears I was crying 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 I was screaming about the baby it was a lot so that happened Maybe five minutes after that, my husband comes walking in. I guess they told him they could come in. He came into the operating room where they left us. And to make a long story short, they left us in that room for another four hours before they let us leave. And when I say they left us in the room for another four hours, they did not come check on us. I actually had to bang one of the buttons in the room to remind them that they said that they were going to discharge us. After I told them that, then they came back about 45 minutes later. This is after three hours of waiting in that room with my husband. I pinged them 45 minutes later. They came and gave us our discharge papers. So, like I said, when my husband came in like four hours, we were there. And then they finally let us leave. And then we went home. Went home to cope with the fact that we no longer pregnant we no longer were expecting and everyone that we had just told we were pregnant at week 13 we had to tell that wasn't the case anymore so so that is our my pre-prom story um during my waiting period and afterwards I did look online for, for some stories to try to see so, um, this is my story, and it's not, I'm sorry, it, it, it's not, I'm happy, but this is my story, my story occurred, and the, and the reason I can tell it so good now, um, is because that happened in 2020, um, like I said, at the height of COVID, so, that was from the January 2020 I found out I was pregnant to the day I had my son um, which was May 5th 2020 this is my PROM story thank you for listening thank you for watching